So, Angela, my first question is, please share a little bit more how you became author. Uh, maybe you will tell us later about your book and what is your story? Well, it's hard to actually really encapsulate where my story began, but if I give you a little bit of a general background, I graduated from university around 1999. I studied comparative literature and then extended into doing a diploma of education. So I became a teacher and I taught English for a really long time. And things started to change for me a, a couple of years ago and I started to think maybe there's something else out there for me in terms of career pathways. But I really, I was like most teachers, we have this amazing skill set but don't actually really recognise that skill set and don't see how it can apply more broadly to the world of being an entrepreneur and yet most teachers have this amazing skill set. Anyway, so this is all bubbling for me in my subconscious, I guess, and the other fortunate thing that we have as teachers is having lots of holidays. So I was on one of these holidays with my family camping in our camper trailer on a beach in the northwest of Western Australia and I was fast asleep and I was having the most vivid dream and in this dream I knew I was going to write a book and the dream actually articulated for me specifically what this book was going to be about and it was all about these characters that we can aspire to and what their characteristics are and then if we actually knew who we wanted to aspire to be then we could simply follow that pathway to living a really fulfilled and meaningful life. So I woke up in the morning and I was absolutely filled with the knowledge that this book was going to be real and that set me off on the journey of researching and reflecting, journaling, seeking information around the concepts that were in that book but at a point in time in the next few months, I actually pivoted on the concept. What it actually did for me was introduce me to Jungian psychology and this concept of archetypal characters, which is central to Jungian psychology. And I explored that and I thought, mm, that's, that's interesting. But the pivot point came for me when I was watching the Brené Brown documentary on Netflix and she's talking about an event where she was swimming with her husband and she was feeling all really lovey and connected and he was in his own world. He really wasn't feeling what she was feeling. And when they stopped, she sat next to him and she said, the story that I'm telling myself here, now that is the only thing I really remember from the whole documentary, but that was the pivot point for me in terms of the content of the book that I ended up writing. And I started to reflect on the fact that we actually do tell ourselves stories, that events don't just happen to us, that we have things happen and then we internalise those and we narrate them to ourselves. It's not something that simply is, but it's our version of what is. And the reality is, is that we have choices about how we actually tell those stories to ourselves. And I want to be able to make the best choice possible because if I'm telling the story of my life to myself, I want it to be a great story, right? I want to feel like I've got agency. I want to feel like my life is worth living. And then the English teacher stuff started to bubble with these concepts. And then I started to think about the fact that there really are only seven archetypal narratives. So if there are only seven ways to tell our stories, then maybe... I can actually unpick how we can tell our stories in these ways and then reflect on whether that's serving us and if it isn't, then what do we do about that to change? So this is all the stuff that kind of bubbled in my head and I journaled about and then in December my business partner in my public speaking business said to me, have you started writing that book yet? And I said, uh, no, I haven't. He said, you did say it was going to be written by the end of January and I said, yes, I did. <laughs> So come January, I've sat down, opened up my computer and started typing and it flowed. This book fell out of me and 50,000 words were written two and a half weeks later. Thank you, uh, Angela, for sharing uh, your personal development journey and also like how you uh, become author. So my question to you is, uh, uh, who are the people you want to uh, impact with your book and uh, with your method and with everything you found for yourself? Who are the people who can have benefits from it? 
Look, I, I really feel that it has a broad application, but for this to actually have meaning for you, you need to be a person who is interested in finding ways to really rethink how you're thinking so that you do actually feel that sense of agency and that, that real contentment in your life. You want to be a person who has a growth mindset, a willingness to look at things differently and be open to a new way of thinking. And at the very least, what this is, these ideas are going to do for you is to give you pause and give you an opportunity to think about things and reflect before actually blindly going forward with your life and acting. And at its very best, it actually gives you the opportunity to sort of rethink things past, present and future so that you know that you have that real control in your life, that real sense of agency and, and, and that you'll actually live the best life that you possibly can. And how does people find you or how do you find them and what kind of transformation they can get when they join you? Hmm. So I have uh, my personal Facebook page and you're more than welcome to request a friendship with me on Facebook. I do have the seven stories we tell ourselves. The, the book has its own Facebook page so you can follow the, the stories, the information, the learning that's contained in there. And then if people actually want to join in, to join with me to actually have some coaching around that, then they can reach out through the, the messenger connection on the Facebook pages and I'm more, to have, more than happy to have conversations with people about the content, the learning and how they can progress. And how people can actually recognise that point that they actually are ready for this kind of uh, questions they might ask themselves, what kind of stories they are talking to themselves, like what kind of signals they can recognize, okay, now is a good time for me to actually explore a little bit more and uh, go deeper in order to increase the quality of life, I would say. Mm, that's a really good question. With each of the narratives, every narrative has a conflict. And every narrative has a resolution. And in recognising what the conflict is that you're narrating to yourself, you will also have that recognition of the resolution. The person who really needs this is the person who is caught in the nightmare stage of the narrative. So it doesn't matter which of the narratives you're telling yourself. If you are ruminating, if you're stuck, if you can't see the way forward, if things are displeasing you, if you're just not happy with how things are going, if you feel like you're under someone else's control, then thinking about things in terms of the seven stories would be very, very useful for you. And uh, Angela, how do you see uh, this time uh, will impact uh, humanity and uh, all of us, and particularly for you and your business? How do you think this is going to uh, finish? Are we going to change our behaviour completely or, again, we will find a way to enjoy life on a, maybe in a different environment than before? It's a very interesting question and you're asking someone who comes from a place in the world that is very minimally impacted by COVID. We have had two lockdowns of a few days and that's it in our whole experience of what everybody else has been going through. So uh, I I feel a, a level of inauthenticity to be talking about our oh, COVID. That's, you know, that's nothing to us. But uh, I guess it has impacted in, in ways that are unexpected. I feel exceptionally fortunate that I don't have to wear a mask everywhere I go because those things are horrific. And I, I can remain connected to people because I get to see their face and I get to see how they're reacting with me. And I still get to be face to face with people. But what I am enjoying is the opportunity to connect with people globally and it's really driven this global connectivity between people and what an exceptional opportunity that has really been. And for me, it's also driven me into a virtual world where I am now embarking on looking at how I can provide my training in, in broad ways through uh, online communities and, and options. So. It's driven me in a direction that I probably would never have gone because truly I am a face-to-face -face person, but it allows that opportunity to be available for many people. And going forward, I, uh, I think that those of us who have functioned really well with being removed from others and slowing down, I think it's really made us value what's important and lots of people have taken the opportunity to 
pare their lives down and, and make them truly serve them and be truly beautiful. But other people like myself just work even harder. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Angela, for sharing that. And I'm glad that uh, you are not impacted directly maybe from uh, from COVID, but at the same time, you find a way uh, how to uh, connect uh, with the people globally. I think that's uh, something which we all can see as a, as a bright side of, of all these uh, things which are going on. And um, my last question is, uh, what are your plans for this year? Are you having any upcoming events? Uh, are you planning uh, maybe a second edition of your books? So in terms of the book, I'm, I'm having an official launch. I'm filling up a, a space and, and I'll be talking to friends and, and a few strangers I'm really going to be pleased to meet and raising a glass of bubbles to uh, wet the book's head, which is very exciting. But because this book was actually written through inspiration as opposed to years of research and, and applying the information and the concepts within the book, I'm now at the point where I need to have people read it, engage with it, learn their concepts, practice the ideas, and then feed back to me what it is that is the impact of that book. And I'm getting some of that already. For example, my friend Kerry that I went to school with, she was one of the very first people to purchase the book. She read it and she said that this book is really having a massive impact on her from the tools that that her and her husband are applying like box breathing and meditation that are, are allowing them to feel less anxious in their in their in their world to actually applying the stories for example Kerry has talked about the fact that she needs to apply the tragedy narrative to many things that have occurred in her life so she can actually truly let those things go and move on and another person who was talking to me about how these stories and thinking about in terms of the stories that they're actually taking pause so she'd be in a in an argument with her partner and pause and think, hang on a minute, how am I telling this story to myself? Is this serving me? And it's actually creating a sense of harmony in her relationship because she's actually applying the, the, the concepts, the learning that the book supplies. These are the stories I need to collect. How is this impacting you? Does this have meaning? Does it not have meaning? And then draw that together and, and share that those stories with other people. Angela, thank you so much. Congratulations one more time for uh, publishing your uh, your book. And uh, I encourage all people who are watching this interview to uh, check out uh, your page, find more information about uh, your method, your book, and reach out to you. Thank you so much, Ed.